is another episode of Antique Roadhouse in Atlanta, Georgia. Based on the markings, your grandmother was responsible for saving more lives than any single person in history. So, my conservative estimate for this teddy bear would be forty-five to fifty-five thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much. You're welcome. I, I'm so proud of my family. Pero yo no te dije que mira, mi, mi, mi hija está allá afuera y ella necesita una nueva pulmón, necesita nuevos pulmones y ahora con estos cuarenta y cinco pesos yo puedo pagar para sus pulmones. Gracias a Dios. Gracias a Dios. <laughs> so good. I'm so proud. Adios. So tell me about this piece. Oh, well, my great great grandfather was a colonel in the Union Army during the Civil War. <laughs> he kept his letters and his personal effects inside this field officer's lockbox. It's been passed down through our family to help keep the legacy of his courage alive. Well, first of all, this isn't a field officer's lockbox, it's an ammo box. And uh, your great-great-grandfather wasn't a colonel in the Union Army. What? A colonel would have a lockbox that's much more ornate and lavish. But judging from the craftsmanship of this, it looks like it was made by a child who was forced into labor at a very, very early age. I've, I've read that children very often made things voluntarily for Union soldiers. That's true, they did, but this isn't a Union box. This is a Confederate Army insignia. There was a faction of Confederate Army soldiers who were notorious for forcing amputees and orphans into making their own personal furniture. However, they used boxes like this for their personal belongings. I'm sure that whichever side he was on, he was a very brave soldier. Actually, he wasn't. Um, he wasn't a soldier. This box was used by the, the lower ranks of the Confederate Army musicians. And this here is a piccolo. And that indicates the instrument that he most likely played. I didn't know that they played a piccolo in battle. <laughs> they didn't. Piccolo players didn't see any fighting. They were sent to local Confederate towns to entertain the women and children. Well, at least he served his country well in some capacity. You know, in other boxes like this, look at there's a false bottom. Really? Yep, yep, yep. Excellent. <sighs> How exciting. This is wonderful. It's a letter. April 13th, 1861. We've only been at war for one day, and I'm already prepared to desert my unit. I've decided to become a traitor and hide myself within the ranks of the Union Army. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that that happened with a lot of other people as well. You know, hey, look at this. It's a very nice necklace. Last night I attacked a local tailor while working on the uniform of a Union colonel. She was very strong, but I was able to sneak up on her and overtake her easily. I ripped a heart-shaped pendant off her neck and kept it and a number of the Union soldier uniforms as my prizes. Oops, so, was... Yeah, um, ooh, look at this. This is a very big knife. <laughs> I didn't have to, but I stabbed her repeatedly until she died. That is dry blood. After burning the tailor's body Old. so her family couldn't ever recognize her, I took a segment of her arm to use as a weapon against the other women in town. Dear Lord, no. Huh. Oh, hey, this is some jewelry. This has got to be worth something, On my right? way out of town, I met some local male prostitutes. I traded the Union uniforms I stole from the tailor for one of their internal sex toys. Oh! That would be. <laughs> We've all become very good friends, and I've decided to join them and pursue a career in taking Dick. Oh, but Jennifer. Hi. Hi. Oh, uh, sorry I never called you back. I just, you know, busy stuff, work. Oh, wow, what you got there? Uh, uh, it's nothing. It's just something I found. <laughs> uh. Oh, my gosh. There's another secret compartment. That's good, right? <laughs>